Looking to take your financial knowledge to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to Ask Ralph. Offering accounting, technical, and financial advice. Whether you're looking to save taxes or improve your business, he's got you covered. Here's your host of Ask Ralph, Ralph Eastup Jr. Welcome back to the Ask Ralph Show. We're going to continue our talk on cryptocurrencies. If you've listened, uh, we've had three other parts of that. First part talking about, you know, what is cryptocurrency, the history of cryptocurrency. You know, then we talked in, in part two about what you can do with cryptocurrency, whether you buy it or invest in it. And part three, you know, we talked about if you want to offer, uh, you know, your business to accept it and some of the, the tax ramifications of it. Today, we're going to talk about the legality of cryptocurrencies. And I'm going to give you my disclaimer that I am not an attorney and I do not offer legal advice. So, you know, if you have any legal questions about this, you know, I would can I would definitely consult with, you know, an attorney or some sort of law enforcement official. But so as cryptocurrencies are becoming more and more mainstream, law enforcement agencies, tax authorities, and legal regulators worldwide are trying to understand the very concept of crypto coins. And where exactly do they fit in existing regulations and legal frameworks? Because, you know, it basically has created, you know, a, a bit of a change for them. You know, with the introduction of Bitcoin, the first ever cryptocurrency, a completely new paradigm was created. And this is one of decentralization, self-sustained digital currencies that don't exist in any physical shape or form and are not controlled by any singular entity were always set to cause an uproar among the regulators. I mean, from a basic standpoint, you know, there's no way of tracking these things because there's no physical, you know, thing there. There's no exchange exchange, which is, you know, for example, if if you were to invest in the stock market, you know, you would use a broker. Well, your broker has an obligation to report to the Internal Revenue Service, you know, uh, Ralph bought, you know, 200 shares of Apple stock and or Ralph sold, you know, 200 shares of Apple stock, you know, so it really would depend on, you know, there's somebody reporting that. So that's where it becomes pretty complicated. So that's why regulators and law enforcement have really been concerned about this. And a lot of concerns were raised because a cryptocurrency's decentralized nature and their anonymousness. You know, in other words, they can be used almost completely anonymously. So, you know, you don't have to know who the person is that you're exchanging, you know, with. It's basically numbers transferring between, you know, two parties. So, you know, for example, you know, think about it in terms of let's say that, you know, the U.S. has an embargo against a country and, you know, you're not allowed to do business with, uh, I, I think Iran is one of those right now. So, if you want to do business with Iran, you know, you're not allowed to transfer, you know, monies to and from that. Well, with these uh, cryptocurrencies, and I'm not trying to tell you how to evade the law. I'm not, I'm just saying this as an example, you know, they're worried about authorities all over the world are worried about the cryptocurrencies appeal to the traders of illegal goods and services. You know, they're also worried about, you know, their use in money laundering and tax evasion schemes, because there's no way to track these things, you know, because there's no central exchange of these. As of November 2017, Bitcoin and other digital currencies are outlawed. Now, this one I found interesting. They're outlawed only in a few countries. That's Bangladesh, Bolivia, Ecuador, Kazakhstan, and Vietnam. Now, one of the things they mentioned in this article, and I, and I didn't update this, so I don't know for sure, but China and Russia are being on the verge of banning them as well. Now, that being said, and we talked a little about the volatility of this when you're going to invest in this, so that some of the, some of the jurisdictions are, you know, you know, you know, blocking this. Other jurisdictions, however, do not make the use of cryptocurrency legal as of yet, but the laws and regulations can vary drastically depending on the country. So you want to be careful that you don't want to get yourself in trouble by, you know, by, by being, in, you know, involved in this. Now, I, there's a list that they put here in this article about the different types of common uh, cryptocurrencies. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about, but I'll throw a couple names out there and talk to you about some of the differences among them. Bitcoin was the first, of course. Uh, Ethereum, which is E-T-H-E-R-E-U-M, it lets developers build different distributed apps and technologies that don't work with Bitcoin. So it's kind of the, the counterpart to Bitcoin. Now, the cool one, which I thought is a cool name, is Ripple. Now, the only thing I remember Ripple from was, I think it was on Sanford and Son when I was a kid, used to be on TV, and I think he talked about drinking Ripple. I think it was some sort of champagne or something. So, But it doesn't use blockchain in order to reach a network-wide consensus for transactions. It's an inter- iterative consensus process is implemented, which makes it faster than Bitcoin, but also makes it vulnerable to hacker attacks. 
So it doesn't have that blockchain or that, you know, that, that, that verification by the whole network. Now, Bitcoin Cash was sort of a break off of Bitcoin and it involves Bitcoin mining chips. And I'm not even going to go there with that. There's another one called NEM. Now, what it does is it uses a proof of work algorithm. And I'm not trying to lose anybody, which requires users to already possess certain amounts of coins in order to be able to get new ones. Now, there's also Litecoin. I mentioned that a few times in this series. Is a cryptocurrency that was created with an intention to be the digital silver compared with Bitcoin's digital gold. Unlike its predecessor, Bitcoin, it can generate blocks four times faster and have four times the maximum number of coins at 84, 84 million coins. So it's basically they've built into that that uh, that Litecoin a larger network. Another one is IOTA. Um, that's a ledger technology called Tangle, and it requires the sender in a transaction to a proof of work that approves two transactions. Thus, it has removed dedicated miners from the process. So there's no miners involved. We talked about miners in one of our sessions earlier. Now, one of the other things that, uh, one of the other ones that we can talk about here is Dash. Dash is a two-tier network. The first tier is miners that secure the network and record transactions, while the second tier consists of um, master nodes that relay transactions and enable instant send and private send type of transactions. Now, another one is QTUM, Q-T-U-M. This is a merger of Bitcoin and Ethereum's technologies targeting business applications. Now, another one is Monero, M-O-N-E-R-O, a cryptocurrency with private transaction capabilities and one of the most active communities. And that's because it's open and privacy focused ideals. And that's the thing you're going to learn about these. As you get into the different types of cryptocurrencies, each of them have a different, you know, a group of people, you know, that they're, that they're trying to, to appeal to, you know, it's, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, the people who use uh, windows machines versus the people who use the Mac operating system. You know, there are people that, that want to have an exchange that's based on, you know, decentralization, or there's people that want to have a, a crypto uh, currency, which is based on more centralization, or there might, you know, there's just so many iterations to this. And that's why it becomes, you know, somewhat more complicated to 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 handle these because it really is an, an issue of you know understanding it you know and we've talked about you know how to store these how to buy these we talked about the different ways of doing it i thought i would end this series with a couple of quotes from some of our business leaders especially in technology and bill gates the co-founder of microsoft investor and philanthropist said bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be bitcoin is better than currency and that you don't have to be physically in the same place and of course for for large transactions, currency can get pretty inconvenient. Now, Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Galactic, said, well, I think it is working. There may be other currencies like that that may even be better, but in the meantime, there's a big industry around Bitcoin. People have made fortunes off Bitcoin. Some have lost money. It is volatile, but people make money off of volatility too. Now, Al Gore, like him or not like him, former vice president of the United States, says when Bitcoin currency is converted from currency into cash, that interface has to remain under some regulatory safeguards. There's our big government guy. I think the fact that with Bitcoin, universe as algorithm replaces the function of government, that is actually pretty cool. Now, Eric Schmidt, the executive chairman of Google, says Bitcoin is a remarkable crypto cryptographic achievement. The ability to create something which is not duplicable in the digital world has an enormous value. Lots of people will build business on top of that. So I hope that this series on cryptocurrency has been helpful to you and you've learned a bit about cryptocurrency. You've been listening to Ask Ralph, brought to you by Sazio Accounting Plus. Please subscribe to and write our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. Our podcast is produced by Carolyn Peters. Thank you for listening and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Ask Ralph Media. You can also hear me each week on 1450 WILM and on 1410 WDOV in Delaware and on the iHeartRadio app. Submit your questions or ideas for future shows by sending an email to Ask Ralph at AskRealth.com. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Sagio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered.